The chair now recognizes himself for an opening statement. 22 days ago, Republicans on this committee released a report showing the Federal Trade Commission sent 12 letters to Twitter in a three-month time span. It happened to be the three months time that Mr. Musk had purchased the company. In the first letter, after the first Twitter files, the first question was, who are the journalists you are talking to? Actually named four journalists personally. Two of those four journalists testified the very next day, three weeks ago today, they testified that day in front of this committee, Michael Schellenberger and Matt Taibbi, right here in this room. And in that hearing, Democrats asked them to reveal their sources. And there's another thing that happened during that hearing. While Mr. Taibbi was testifying, the Internal Revenue Service paid a visit to his home, left a note on his door saying, we'll be back in touch with you next week. That all happened. That all happened. And then we learn at the same time, excuse me, certainly appears that oh, uh, we still do not have the answers from the IRS about that unlikely coincidence. It certainly appears to be just the latest example of the weaponization of the federal government against the American people. And it shows the need for this subcommittee and its work to proceed no matter how robust the opposition. Today's hearing is so important and builds on our prior work related to government-induced censorship. It was interesting, in the first hearing, we had Mr. Turley, by the way, not a, not a Republican, Mr. Turley, who talked about censorship by surrogate. In our hearing three weeks ago, we had two journalists, again, not Republicans, talk about the censorship industrial complex. And today, Senator Schmidt and Attorney General Lander, I read through their written testimony last night, they talk about the vast, censorship enterprise. And the key word in all three is the word censorship, because that is exactly what's going on. Today's hearing provides an opportunity to bring to light evidence from within the federal government and federal agencies that have driven much of this censorship. This evidence comes from the litigation efforts of Missouri and Louisiana against the federal government. The state's lawyers in, that case, in those cases are here to testify before us today. Within days of taking office, the Biden White House was already pressuring big tech to suppress free speech. The censor's goal is simple. Limit what Americans can see, limit what Americans can say, which is a direct assault on the right to free speech that is protected by the First Amendment. The censors have bullied big tech with threats to get them to do the government's bidding, and big tech has all too often agreed to collude with the government and facilitate uh, the censorship agenda. In this country, the government does not get to pick what viewpoints are right, what issues we discuss, or what we believe. But that is exactly what the White House and the agencies as varied as the CDC and the FBI have done. Their censorship has extended to speech on critically important topics, like how best to respond to COVID-19, and even to elections themselves. That kind of speech is at the heart of a free country and our republic. The amount of content censored has been staggering. One nonprofit that is part of the censorship industrial complex has boasted that 35% of the pages it flagged for social media companies were either labeled, removed, or soft blocked. But perhaps even worse is the scope of the censorship. The government no longer pretends that censorship is limited to foreign disinformation or even domestic misinformation. Instead, censorship extends to the so-called malinformation. In other words, true information that is supposedly misleading and conflicts with the censor's preferred narrative. And that is the most dangerous and frankly, the most frightening thing of all. Censorship isn't about truth, it's about power. The evidence from this litigation shows the need for this subcommittee's work investigating the entirety of the censorship industrial complex. The federal government is at fault, but it is also should be able to uh, weaponize non-government actors, it should not be able to weaponize non-government actors to work on its behalf to advance censorship. This subcommittee must investigate the extent of what has happened here, and we must protect the American people from it happening again. Already this subcommittee has requested related documents from the federal agencies, big tech companies, and their intermediaries that make up this complex, this vast censorship enterprise. This important work must continue so that the American people learn what their government has done to them so that this Congress can take action to ensure
that it doesn't happen again. The chair now recognizes the ranking member, the gentlewoman from the Virgin Islands, Ms. Plaskett, for her opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good morning 